Hey folks, James here, uh, Pro 3 driver number 7 and what I'm going to show you today is uh, we're going to look at the channels report and we're going to look at what kind of data is available um, in large part uh, data collected using AIM Solo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the um, the AIM software for analysis and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a couple of sessions. So uh, we're going to stick with Portland International Raceway and I'm going to select um, the qualifying sessions from the um, Pro 3 race or the Pro 3 qualifying on Sunday, August 19th. So I'm going to select my data and holding down the, shift, uh, the control key, I'm going to select uh, Dan Gravilla's data and I'm going to open both those tests. And so what you can see right now on the screen is um, some uh, all sorts of information which is uh, you know either useful or it's not useful. Um, there's some stuff here I want to keep and some stuff that I don't and so the first thing I want to be able to see is I want to be able to see how fast I was going um, and how fast we were equally going at certain points in the track and so you can actually see that um, one of the uh, uh, channels that's available they're all represented on the left hand side here by these grey uh, buttons is GPS speed so we're going to keep that but for some reason switched on right now is the uh, internal battery indicator and, and coming from an AIM solo that's not really telling us any information that we need so I'm going to click on that and deselect it so right now what we can see on this chart and it's represented in terms of an overlay but you can see it if I just click on my data which is my tab at the top you can see that's my data that is associated with, uh, with uh, my fastest lap uh, in this session um, and uh, so that's the first thing but I want to be able to see more than that one of the other pieces of information that's captured by the AIM Solo is um, acceleration and deceleration that's represented in um, GPS uh, longitudinal acceleration and you can see that on the left hand side here captured by all AIM Solos and also captured by the uh, MXL Pista as well is GPS long ACC that's in GPS longitudinal acceleration if I click on that, now you can see that there's two lots of information on the screen, but right now it's, it's pretty difficult to be able to see and pretty difficult to be able to read. And so what I want to be able to do is be able to read that data a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the top right hand side, and right now if I hover over these buttons on the right, you can see that uh, there are different options available. Right now it seems I have all the data in one place, but if I click on this button here that says Show Graphs Tiled, it's actually going to stack the data on top of each other and now I can start seeing useful information. So you can see here on the top part I can see the speed and now represented by um, GPS longitudinal acceleration when the chart dips down that's deceleration and when the chart goes back up that's acceleration. And so now I can see how fast I was going and I can see where on the track I was braking and where on the track I was accelerating. Now, interestingly enough, this information is also gathered and is available for Dan's test as well, and you can see that. But if I actually click on the Test Compare button here, right at the very top, what the system is going to do is going to overlay both of those charts. So we've now got some comparison, and it's going to add a third chart on the bottom of this, which represents time over distance. And so you can see whether that time is... Um, represented by one of the drivers being faster or slower than the other. And so interestingly here, um, one of the things you can see is that the red line, which actually in this instance is my lap time, is the reference because it's the faster of the two laps. When the blue line, which is Dan in this instance, is below the red line, Dan is actually faster than I am. And when the blue line is above the red line, Dan is slightly slower. And what we need to do is we need to be able to see where on the track, based on speed, braking and acceleration, the time is represented by when Dan is faster or when Dan is slower than I am, so we can start doing some analysis and see who's doing what in which particular area on the track. And so already this chart is very useful. But in order to make this complete, one of the things that we really need here is to be able to understand where on the track each of the drivers is. So the last thing I'm going to show before we get into any kind of analysis is how do you actually get a map up on the screen to be able to determine where each of these particular points are. As in when we look at the fastest speed, which in this instance is represented by these two um, red triangles, where exactly on, is um, that on the track so that we can make some form of assessment and start talking as to who's doing what and where. 
And so before we do any kind of additional stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here in the top bar is this map option. And you can see that there is an option for creating a new map. If I click on new map here, it's going to take one of the laps, one of the fastest laps, and it's going to say, what does the map layout look like? What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, great, that is PIR, and I'm just going to say in the bottom, name it, it's chicane. I spelled that right, no, yes, almost. And I'm just going to click on OK. What that's going to allow me to do now is not only is it broken into segments, which makes analysis easier, is that I can click up here and show track map. And now what it's doing is it's actually showing where we are on the map. And so you can see that's represented here by the cross. And so if I'm so interested in finding out where now that fastest point on the track was, if I click now on the fastest point, the cross is showing that at Portland International Raceway, the fastest point right now for a Pro 3 car is as we approach turn 10 and we go to hit the brakes after the back straight. And so now I've got all the information that I need to be able to make some kind of analysis, or at least start some rudimentary analysis. Obviously there's a lot more data that can be gathered. But here what we can see is I can see where I'm fast, where I'm slow, I can see where I'm braking, where I'm accelerating, and I can also see where I'm faster or slower than somebody else who I'm trying to compare data against.